This video was meant to be the final edit of the Porsche Taycan review that we filmed last month in California, but now that's hopefully going to drop next week. Why? Well, Porsche has just published official EPA range figures for the 2020 Taycan, and it's causing something of a stir in the plug-in vehicle world. No, scrap that. It's causing a massive stir in the automotive world. Why? Well, because the $151,000 Taycan Turbo manages 201 miles on the EPA test cycle, which puts it well below other plug-in cars in terms of range per charge, given the size of the car's battery pack. Tesla, of course, is the first car that comes to mind as a competitor, with its high-end, high-spec S managing 373 miles of range per charge, a huge advantage for a car that is a lot less to buy as well. Porsche has published its own results from separate independent tests that show a range closer to 280 miles is technically possible. 280 miles is actually what Porsche quotes for the European tests in Europe. But either way, the daggers are most certainly out. How or why would anyone want to buy a car that does 201 miles per charge and costs more than one half of the median price paid for a new home in the US last month? Who would want to do that when a high-end Model S goes nearly twice as far per charge and even the entry-level Model 3 standard range can outperform it alongside pretty much every other new car out there when it comes to range per charge? If range is your absolutely only concern, then you'd be right. I, for example, when faced with a blank check from some rich benefactor and the instruction to buy whatever long-distance electric car I wanted, would not be buying a Porsche Taycan as a daily driver. Honestly, I'd probably be looking at a Tesla Model Y or perhaps a Rivian R1T, although the R1T would probably be too large as a daily driver. Mm. But anyway, if they told me to buy a high-end sports car that could take track days in its stride and be comfortable to boot, well, then the Taycan would be up there at or near the top of my list. My point? We are so obsessed with range in the plug-in vehicle world that we fail to see beyond it when new cars come to market. We value cars based not on what they offer us in terms of driving experience or functionality, but in terms of how far we need to go before we charge effectively how fuel efficient they are. And let's be honest, when was the last time someone purchased a sports car based on its fuel economy? I don't think I've ever heard someone say they're not going to buy a muscle car because it doesn't get 50 miles per gallon, or someone moaned that the Porsche 911 Turbo S struggles to get more than 21 miles per gallon combined. No, when buying a high performance car built for speed and driver engagement, most people focus on the power output of the engine, the 0 to 60 sprint time, and the car's top speed. They worry about how quickly the car can stop before they worry about the fuel economy. But because we are obsessed with electric car range, we have made that our top collective priority and developed a system where everything else is substandard if our range expectations are not met. For most sports car enthusiasts, acceleration, handling and responsiveness are their primary goals. And having spent a day with a Taycan Turbo, I can certainly attest that all of those are offered in buckets with the Taycan. The Taycan is a car that's produced in the spirit of all of the Porsches that came before it, but with an electric drivetrain instead of a gasoline one. And efficiency's never really been Porsche's thing. It's something I've argued before on this channel in stating that the Taycan doesn't really cross up against Model S. The car's primary function is not the same as the Model S's primary function, which, by the way, according to Tesla, is also not speed, but safety. When all of that is said and done, however, it is disappointing, if not unexpected, that Porsche has made a car that prioritises performance so heavily that range is impacted. I hope that it can tweak its engineering and perhaps eke out some extra miles via over-the-air software updates. For example, adding in regenerative braking, there is a little right now but it's not huge, could certainly help with range, and so could a more chill throttle mode for everyday driving. But the other thing I think we should take into consideration here with the Taycan estimates from the EPA is this. The Porsche Taycan is no slouch when it comes to charging. It can charge at an 800-volt CCS charging station in super-quick time. 
Tesla, of course, also has its next generation V3 supercharger, which makes it possible to charge at 1000 miles of range per hour. But the Taycan is no slouch. When it's using an 800 volt charging experience, it is super quick. I really wouldn't mind stopping every 200 miles to charge if every charging station offered that capability. And on that front, it is as fast as Tesla's fastest, or, or, or certainly feels that way. In summary then, well, in a world pre-Tesla, if everyone was worried about fuel efficiency and range, we would all have been driving Priuses. These days, if efficiency and range are our top priorities, then we would all be driving Tesla Model 3 long ranges. Cost be damned. But we're not, because we don't all have the same priorities. The Taycan does have a market and it will sell. Yes, those figures are lower than I personally would like them to be, but to pull my hair out and complain because Porsche hasn't made it leaders in range? Well, that seems a little unfair on Porsche. It's never been about going as far as possible on as little as possible. It's been about going as fast as possible with as much driver engagement as possible. And for some customers, that's exactly what they want too. That's it. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to help us make more videos like this, please do like, comment and subscribe. Send us a couple of dollars our way every month through Patreon, feed our coffee habit with Kofi, or visit our swag store. I'll be back soon with more content for you all to enjoy. But until then, behave yourselves and keep evolving.